16 bound Gonzaga Bulldogs, head coach Lisa Fortier, student athletes Yvonne Ejim, and Kaylee Trong. Opening statements, coach? I'm just really happy for our players. Um, these guys, uh, they set their own goals and they wanna break all these records and do all these things that people at Gonzaga haven't done before. And you just have to re keep reminding them to check them off little by little. And so, um, you know, if you wanna do things we haven't done, we gotta go one step at a time. And they played tough today. Um, the quarter, the second quarter, you know, Utah's a great third quarter team. And, um, you know, they're a really good team anyway, but we, we we wanted to be strong in the third quarter, but our second quarter, it turns out, was a huge decider in the game. And just I love how tough our team played when it got rough out there, it got close. I don't know if they cut it to six or five, seven, something like that. Um, six, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I just know that uh, we came down and made some free throws and we, we got the stop that we needed, we got the rebounds. Um, all of a sudden, here comes Eliza and Vani uh, on the glass. And so I just love how we covered for each other in every area today. and. Um, Really proud of our effort. These two and all those guys back in the locker room. We'll open for questions with the student athletes. Uh, Tim Griffin, JV. Kaylee, can you kind of walk us through that second quarter, take us through that second quarter a little bit where it seemed like I think you guys hit seven or eight shots in like five straight from three. Like, what, what was working so well offensively in the second? I <clears throat> I think we were just moving the ball from one side of the court to the other. We weren't stagnant at all. I didn't feel like it. I felt like I was running through our plays just nonstop. I thought we moved it well, too, and just were very sure um, not to just get sloppy or casual with it. And, you know, once we get multiple touches from both sides, it, it's hard to defend the court the whole time. Seemed like you made every one of them. It was 11 to 13. Nerves at that moment, or were you just totally locked in? Locked, locked in for sure. I think if anything, um, oh, when I, oh, closer. Um, locked in for sure. I think if anything, um, when I got to the line, like right there in that moment, I said this is my chance to do something for my team. So I think if anything, completely locked into like what I can provide for my team and for like free throws. Like that's what we practice. That's what we do, and that's how we contribute. Yeah, I was telling Vonnie, like, <coughs> if we're not going to score this possession and we get on the free throw line, we got to reward ourselves somehow, you know, for this possession. And um, I thought we did a really good job of that. We didn't take any of the free throws for granted. <coughs> I think if anything, we have a lot of good leaders on our team, and this one right here, I feel like any time, like, let's say they got a shot in or we didn't get a, like, they got a stop on us and things like that, she's always telling us, like, right here in the moment, right here, and I think just that grounding that we get, especially from, like, Lee and other people on our team, I think it's so important for everyone else to kind of, like, lean into that, because, like, we're each other's supporters, so if we have each other, then, like, we're straight. Bonnie, talk about the battle you had with uh, Keely out there. You guys are just, uh, you must have left bruises on each other out there. Probably. <laughs> um, it, it was definitely a physical game down there. Um, I definitely respect her game so much. Um, I mean, she's an amazing player. So um, I'm just happy that I got to fight it out with her today. And I think if anything, like kudos to her and kudos to the team. Uh, they played really hard. But you know, we're just coming out, playing with a lot of energy and matching their physicality. They brought a lot of it, a lot of physicality. And like that's the game that if we have to step up and do that, we're going to do that. So I think we did that well today. <laughs> You count the five straight threes in the second. You had hit the first three threes in the third, so eight straight in a row. Yeah, that's hurting the first. <laughs> that's hurting the first? Okay, by nine. Okay, thanks. I don't need that for my story. <laughs> but uh, did you feel the crowd kind of turning you on? Oh, 100%. They were locked in as much as we were. Um, you know, that gives us a lot of energy, especially when we're trying to. 
when, especially when, sorry, <laughs> especially when uh, we, we're trying to look for some momentum. Um, they're there backing us up, you know, whenever, wherever, whatever play, whatever happens, you hear them nonstop. Was going up into the stands planned? Tell me about that celebration. No. <laughs> I was kind of just like, let's go. I mean, like, the student section, like, they brought it today. Um, kudos to them. They brought it on, wait, when did we play Saturday? Saturday. Yeah. Um, so, like, kudos to them. I think I talked about this last time, but, like, just their energy um, and kind of all the other Zag fans that we have, like, they bring so much energy and encouragement to our game. And, I mean, you got to give them credit for what they do. It's not easy going up there and standing the whole game <laughs> and cheering people on, losing your voices and things. <laughs> You guys are easier to cheer for than you think. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cameron McCann, Zaga Bulletin. Uh, this is for both of you, but uh, this is the first time this unit has gotten out of the first weekend. Uh, what are some of the things that took that it took to get here? I, th I think it started from the jump, um, right before preseason even started. Like Coach Lisa said, we all came together as a team, and we set a standard. We wanted, we wanted what we wanted, and this was part of our one of our goals. So, you know, I, you know, I, when I, t I talk about this team all the time, but we were so committed to each other. And you can tell from the practices, like, I, I wish y'all can sit in and just see how we go head to head every single time trying to get each other better. Um, and then when we step on the court, I mean, it, 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 it make it make the, like, yeah, definitely. Kaya Crawford from Zaga Bulletin. Haley, what does it mean to you and the other seniors to get these extra games here in front of your home crowd? It means a lot. It's very special. We said our goodbye speeches during senior year or senior night, um, but it's. I'm I'm just so grateful that we got another chance to play two more games at this home court because it's, it's nothing like it here and, uh, like, just a lot of gratitude. I, I keep saying that, but a lot of gratitude. Uh, everyone just showed up for us. <coughs> for both of you, there's only four programs that have both those numbers on this. Yeah, I think if anything, um, like we go to work here at Gonzaga, we build people, we build players, we build programs that um, can do what they need to do and get things done. And I think both our men's side and our women's side does a great job of that and a great job of um, kind of building their athletes uh, throughout that. And not even just like our sport, but like other sports as well. So kudos to this school. Um, but I think if anything, like it's just a testimony to the work that we've put in from the get go. Um, and congrats to the guys. Like, I mean, um, they're going to the Sweet 16 as well. Um, and I think if anything, you just got to see how we play and it'll kind of reflect like what Gonzaga is about and what Gonzaga basketball is about. We have a Zoom call from Ricky Snell. Um. Haley and well, Tim stole my question, but let me um, follow up by asking. I think the guys team was home. I think that they were there tonight. And just what is it like for you all to be able to support each other? You know, you get unique at the WCC tournament. You get to cheer each other on. How much do you think that helps your programs? Me? Um, I think if anything, it kind of just like reflects kind of like that connect connectedness we have between our sports um, and I think it's amazing that we have our guys out here training for us I mean we go to their games sometimes um, when we're home um, and we have the opportunity to during conference and during preseason as well so I think it's just um, great to have their support here in the crowd final question for the student athletes uh, yeah so throughout this weekend there's been multiple times where the crowd has just erupted after whether it's a shot or whether it's a rebound or whether it's a block do you have a favorite moment when the crowd just went berserk or when maybe something went right from this weekend? I don't know what it was, but uh, I think we were on a run or something like that. <laughs> and there was like a timeout taken and I was coming in. I literally got a head rush because the crowd was like so loud, like so loud, you know? Anybody have an Apple Watch and then the like 90 decibels go off? Yeah, mine was at like 250. Like the crowd was like intense in that moment. I don't know exactly what play, but I was literally like, I stopped in my tracks and I was shook. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, guys, like, let's go. Like, and it just, it kind of all just went in me. Like it fed into my energy too, so. Yeah. yeah, no, I felt like the whole game was just, you could hear the crowd the whole game, but 
I think one was when we went on our run, and then you, it was a fast break, and Bonnie, you passed it to Lies, I think, and Lies got the and one. Yeah. That was like, I, I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't even hear myself talk to them in the huddle. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, thank you, ladies. Thank you, you are thank you guys. Thank you. See ya. Come back. We'll open now for questions from Coach Fortier. A reminder, if you are on Zoom, to use the raised hand icon to ask a question. You said your offense has been good at various points this year, but that second quarter, and why was it, why was it that good that quarter? Gosh, I don't know. <clears throat> I think our defense was better than our offense in that quarter. You know what I mean? We've, I, we've had... For us, a 20-point quarter is pretty regular, right? A lot of teams hope for those kind of things, but we can put 20, 24 together. We've had 32, I think, was our high this season. So we have a lot of offensive firepower. Um, I think that our defense was good because we were getting stops. And so we were playing free and we were playing loose. And, uh, you know, or our offense was good because our defense was good. And so I think that feeds into it. And um, this team, when they buckle down and get a stop, you go in transition, and it doesn't matter how good a transition defense team you have, there's people open places. If you want to take someone away, I've said it all year, it's very difficult. They, they didn't really double team Vaughn too much today. They switched the matchup when they didn't like the one matchup for Eliza, I think, more than Vonnie. But it's like, what are you going to do? Because as soon as you try to take away Brenna, you know, they were in her shorts. They were trying hard to, to keep her off the, well, th they got other players who can shoot the three. And so that's when Lenny got off loose a little bit. Eliza got a couple at that time. I don't know. Lee made one or two at that time. I don't know who made all which ones. But um, I think that's, that's what it is, is if they can get the stops, then it makes your offense a whole lot better. You were talking about getting stops. Um, I noticed you got almost always had a play that Coach did in the corner to the left corner. Sagged off that a lot. Um, other than Philly, not much you can do there. A lot of Oprah's and one lunkers on the score sheet. How were you able to <coughs> neutralize the other players as successfully as you did defensively? Well, I mean, Alyssa had a great game, and she's a great player. And they, we knew that they were going to go to her. You know, you go through the scouting report, and Vonnie was joking about it. You know, they run this stat, and, it, and what happens at the end? The ball goes to Alyssa. And then this, that happens, and the ball goes to Alyssa. And they have good, really good shooters, but we have a similar style of play. We have a player like that, and it seems like the ball goes there, and then either you get scored on or they kick it out to a three-point shooter. But they, they were trying to just go to Liss uh, today, it seemed like. And so that's why she had 35. Um, but some of those other guys, I think, were not in the flow, maybe. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Our, our focal point defensively was try to not leave anyone on an island on Alyssa. And we didn't. She's just that good sometimes. And so I think that that's part of the reason maybe they weren't in flow. It was going in there. Sometimes it was coming out, but it, they had to work for it. And I think that we closed out well. So it wasn't like we just double teamed Alyssa and then gave up, you know, give up, took our chances on those other guys. We were trying to get to them, and we mostly did. So. I was wondering, I think you probably went on the first of the three run, and they went up by, I think, seven or so. Was there anything that you had to say to your team? got that rally because then I think you guys went on that 21 to 3 run or whatever it may be that they really kind of changed the course of the game. Yeah, I don't I don't remember what I said exactly. I know that m my goal for the game was to kind of be what they needed me to be um, and de-escalate and let them put them in a position to make basketball plays because they're really good basketball players. They're smart. They're old. You know, they've, done, they've played a lot of games. They've had the ball in their hands a lot. And so I, I think at that point we were talking about maybe some help side things. Um, I think we had picked up one foul on Alyssa. They, they went right in, and, and then maybe she popped for a three or two. She might have gotten two threes right off the bat. And so we wanted to adjust to that, and it's tough to figure out, you know. But I think really it was just trying to steady the moment and make sure like we're, that we were okay. We, no, no, no need to freak out. Let's just be okay. We're okay. We have a Zoom call from Lindsay Snell. Hi. Um, first, I wanted to tell you I really like your jacket. Um, <laughs> You know, so you're going to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2015, but you guys have been such a consistent program. You're the only mid-major left in the women's tournament. On the men's side, we hear people say all the time that Gonzaga men are not a mid-major. They're so good. They're basically a power five school. Is it time that we start thinking about the Gonzaga women that way too, do you think? Yeah, I, uh, we're long past it, Lindy. I love you too, uh, but <laughs> I think you know, it's like when I took over as a head coach, we had to start w from scratch again to get back to this point. But we were really 
not really like a mid-major. We had Courtney Vandersloot here and Heather Bowman here and Tiffany Shives here and Vivian Bryson here, and we made all those runs. And we haven't had a deep one um, since I've been head coach. We had one Sweet 16 run. Um, and so it's been some time, but every year we're competitive. Every year we compete with those teams. I, so yes is the answer. I'm, I'd be happy to, to hear us not be considered in that realm, except for, you know, we also don't care because <laughs> we're not listening to what everyone else is saying. We're trying to stay in our locker room and, um, you know, focus on the things that we can control and we can't control all those other things. But I do appreciate um, you saying that, and I know that you know the quality of our program, and I think that all the people out there who know the quality of our program probably haven't been calling us a mid-major for a long time. Yeah, Coach, uh, Yvonne Eden has been terrific all season, right? And she got her saves. She got 17. But in the first half, 59% of your shots were from behind the arc. Uh, was that a game plan going in? Was that kind of an adjustment from, you mentioned earlier, they were just in Brenna's shorts, and so you looked to other people who were a little bit open, but you weren't open because of that. Uh, but game plan or adjustment? Um, I would say both, maybe. You know, we, we like to go inside out. We like to have balanced offense. Um, people, I'll, every time a recruit or somebody asks me, what kind of offense do you run? I say, we, we run in transition and we, we like balance. We need forwards who can shoot it from inside, who can score it from the perimeter. We need guards who can attack. We like people who can shoot it. We'll take the ones who can post up. Like just, just having a balance and a variety. And so uh, today, we, we did go to Vaughn quite a bit, but again, she brings attention. So sometimes there was attention that came in there. People dropped or dug in. Um, Otherwise, you know, in our some of our continuities that we run, they're coming off ball screens, they're cutting, they're reading each other. And when you have such a veteran group who, I mean, I trust the Trongs to have the ball in their hand against any team, and they're going to make better decisions than I'm going to direct. So um, just kind of let it go, go through them a little bit. And um, it, it happened to be that we were getting a lot of those threes. And then at a different time, we went to Bonnie a little bit more. So I think the balance was the key. Well, I mean, I've basically raised them as my own. They've been here for so long. <laughs> um, no, I think that they, you know, they've been here for a long time. And Kaylee started starting in her freshman year. And then, you know, they've just logged a lot of minutes. And they've proven that they can make those decisions. So we always say that there's a lot of freedom with understanding in our program. And it, when you're younger, until you understand what we're trying to get, then we might try to direct you a little bit more. But those guys now as fifth years, who've logged plenty of minutes and started lots of games and been in lots of big moments. They just, I, I'm confident that they know what to do and they're gonna do it well. They're gonna step up at the right moments. And so I, I just think they've proven over time that they're capable of those things. And um, then they trust us. You know, they, they, we, we cover for each other. We lean back and forth, you know, me and, me and them, Stacy and them, Craig and them, cr those guys call more of the offense. Um, Stacy and Craig and Jordan does more defense. So the three of us are kind of working with those two, but really they've proven that they can handle it. And then I know how far you advanced in the tournament really doesn't make us find what the program is at or the success of it, but it has been nine years since you've gotten there this, this fall. What does that mean to you to get there again? Yeah, I just think, um, you know, we, we try. And it's, it's a, sometimes it's about draw and sometimes it's about health. And, um, you know, I don't know if Utah was a good draw for us and we're not healthy. <laughs> so uh, sometimes it's just you got you, the ball goes in the basket when it's supposed to and you get the stops you need to. And so if that's what it's about, then I'm really happy for these players. Um, and I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember where you're from, which paper? AP. Okay, so I don't know how familiar you are with our team, but with those guys coming back for their fifth year, um, they could have all been playing pro, playing whoever school in the world. And so the, the four of those super seniors, um, and you throw Vani into that, they, they came back with passion and something that they, they, they didn't have necessarily before. And so the, I think the part that means a lot is that these guys get to experience it. I've been, I've been to quite a few of them, you know, five or whatever, six, I don't know. But they haven't. And it's not about being a head coach or an assistant coach. It's about the players in there getting to experience it. And so that's why it's meaningful to me. We have a Zoom call from Brenna Green. There's a lot of regionality there. There's a lot of guys from Portland. Just how much are you looking forward to? I think it's great. 
Um, you know, it's I, I I'm really excited for us to get down there. Um, you know, th it's not a home environment, but I think that we're we're pretty comfortable in that underdog uh, space. That's what it, it feels like we are, just because that's who we're built on a little bit here at Gonzaga. And um, you know, I, I know the Zags are everywhere, but uh, it's nice to have to only go an hour away and you know five hours in a car. And hopefully Spokane will show up down there too. And uh, I, I think that the whole thing is going to be exciting. So I, I think that's that's great. It's great that we're still playing. It's great that. My players made all those baskets. You know, I think <laughs> right now you could really tell me, hey, your daughter wants to make some cookies when you get home. What's that environment going to be like? And I'm like, it's going to be awesome. Let's do it. Because um, I'm just, you know, just happy for them. And uh, I know that we're going to be well supported down there. And it's going to be fun. One last question for Coach. Um, Coach, you are. Oh, yeah. Coach, you always speak very highly of your four seniors who came back. What does it mean for you to see them get to eventually bring some home that home crowd? Yeah, I mean, it was it's like playing on house money a little bit. You know, we came in, we didn't know if this was going to happen when we went down to Vegas after we had senior night. And so I just, they truly, as good as our crowds are throughout the regular season, today was different. And, and I've experienced it, and I just want them all to experience how loud and how exciting. And it's it's way better to do this in front of your own crowd than you know even upsetting some team that you're on their home of. So uh, just, again, genuine, the, the joy in the locker room um, is really special. So. OK, Lindsay, you get the last question. Well, thank you. I have to follow up, because Lisa just said something about if her daughter wanted to make cookies, <laughs> wanted to make cookies, is this a post-game tradition after you win that you intend to bake cookies? I think they can ask for anything right now, right? So don't tell them. But uh, no, it's not a tradition. I just was like, it, it's 10, 15. They should all be in bed. But who cares? Let's <laughs> let's do a movie. Let's get ice cream. I don't know. Uh, that was what that was alluding to. <laughs> all right, Coach. Thanks. Thanks, you guys.